Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we have another discussion video and these are always awkward to make because I don't know if I should stare at the camera or at my, one of my two monitors for example. But either way, I find these very interesting to make and hopefully you guys find them very interesting to listen to as well. So today's topic of discussion is the current top player scene and uh, I have a pretty, uh, pretty important reason to make this video and that is because I'm hosting a tournament champions league uh, big tournaments in uh, November and the official date hasn't been announced but I'm announcing it now it's going to be the 14th and the 15th Saturday Sunday a one weekend event sponsored by Tempo Storm at least 5,000 in prize pool and for every hundred subs that we get on the YouTube since the release of my trailer video which I will link in the description below uh, for those who haven't seen it for every hundred subs on YouTube that I got since the release of that video I'm going to be adding ten dollars to the prize pool so it's going to be over five thousand dollars for sure and uh, definitely more uh, because of the YouTube. Uh, so I highly encourage you guys to check out that video and to subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Uh, so anyway, with, with all that aside, that is the reason I wanted to do this uh, video. And there's another reason as well. I often get asked, Harold, what's your top five players? And again, I like to do this as factually as possible because I have my biases. I'm sure you guys as fans want to support your favorite player and you know you have your biases as well. So I try to be as factual as possible. And to do that, we have to look at term results. I'm sorry, ladder fanboys, ladder means very little when it comes to assessing the top player situation. It's gonna be very real with you guys. So the sources I'm, I will be using is uh, Liquipedia primarily to take a look at the re recent results in 2020. And also take a look at the uh, aw2.net or aw2elo.com, sorry, uh, to take a look at some a little bit of history uh, and statistics based on win rates and whatnot. And again, this site has its flaws. I'm well, I'm well aware of that, but I'll be using it strictly for uh, statistical purposes and not, not to draw conclusions. Conclusions will be drawn from Liquipedia. And I've actually compiled an Excel sheet. Oh boy, Jordan, you better watch out, my man. I have compiled an Excel sheet and uh, kind of compiled the results from these tournaments into there so it's easy to digest but anyway we'll go into it in a second uh firstly i want to state for this uh, video i'm going to be taking results from 2020 only however it must be said uh the returnments from before definitely matter for the narrative and definitely matter for um you know when when, when giving when giving a conclusion but i really want to talk about 2020 because my tournament will be based on the top four performing players of 2020 and it doesn't you know, go into necessarily what happened beforehand. But I just want to say before it happened to 2020, Viper was definitely the most dominant player from 2019 going into 2020, 100%. Uh, me as a player, I was very, um, you know, very uh, kind of overlooked and for a good reason because I didn't really have that many good results in 2019 and beforehand. Uh, Mistio has always been a beast of a player. He had, uh, in fact, a tournament win in Mongo Shadows Cup, which is a big one for himself. And uh, Tata was also considered a very strong player. Again, you see his name pop up a couple of times for runners up. Leary was always great on King of the Desert. And then we had the Max pop up in a Hidden Cup 2 finals versus Viper. But again, the dominating player, definitely the Viper going into 20, 2020. However, 2020 brought in a lot of changes. Definitive Edition coming out was a huge change of meta. We had new balance, new game, new platform, a lot of new stuff. And, uh, and it, you know, it really caused a big shift in, in, in what happened in the top, in the top tournaments. And uh, well, as a result, we saw what happened this year and a lot of new names popping up and a lot of fascinating term results. Let's hop into it here and take a look at what I compiled. So I'm gonna be going off of Wikipedia in their S tier tournaments only. So I will consider only S tier tournaments and only the ones where top players really participated on random map settings. Empire War is included in that, but not Deathmatch, sadly. So I'm gonna be taking a look at King of the Desert, Red Bull Wolalo 2, Red Bull Wolalo 1, Hidden Cup 3, and Nilly's Apartment Cup 3. So five tournaments, I counted them on my hands, I know it's correct. Five tournaments uh, of 2020, all S tier, all with big prize pools, and all 1v1. Disregarded Battle of Africa and Disregarded Deathmatch, and not sure what that is. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at these S tier events. Not going to bother with A tier or B tier, although they are quite important for some narrative in some certain cases. I feel like if we want to determine the best players, we've got to take the best tournaments. Let's hop into the Excel sheet that I've uh, compiled here. Let me zoom in because I really want you guys to see. I hope you can zoom in. Uh, zoom percentage, 150. Aha, much better. Maybe even 200. Can I be so bold? Oh, look at that. Not bad, eh? Um, maybe a little. No, I think that's a little too bold, though. Let's go back to 150. All right, I'm prepared as usual. Um, so anyway, let's take a look here. And I had I created a scoring system. Obviously, KOTD is not done. In fact, it's one day from being done. So for the finals of KOTD, I was a little bit... Uh, uh, kind of I left both cases open and available uh, between Leary and MBL 
Congrats to both of them for making it to the finals, by the way. May the best man win tomorrow, and it's going to be a nice series, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, back on topic here. I created a scoring system, which is pretty pretty vague, but it's basically first place is five points, third place finishes three points, or second place is, third, is three three points, and third and fourth finish is one point. Anything below third and fourth, any, anything below semifinals would just be zero points. The reason I got the scoring system is that I, f I felt like it's not fair to make third and fourth um, you know, one and then second two and then first only three. Uh, and the reason is the prize distribution makes more sense this way. If you're first for KOTD, for example, you get 17,000, second you get 9,000, and then third, fourth you get like 4,000. So it makes more sense. It's not like, uh, you know, one and then I don't know. It just, it just makes more sense to do it this way for some reason. So I went a little bit off prize distribution as my reasoning. Again, it's a really a little bit vague and hard to explain, but hopefully this makes sense. And again, I could have easily went one, two, th one, two, and three. I chose one, three, and five though. Same reasoning or same concept rather. So let's take a look at the results here. So for NEC, we have the Viper winning first place and uh, Leary dropped out of top eight, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then we had, uh, or not top eight, but he didn't get to the semifinals. Uh, Mr. Yo got to the semifinals, lost to Viper. Uh, again, important in the narrative for Mr. Yo, by the way. Him and Viper have a massive rivalry this year. It was crazy. And the narrative between that is really good. So we'll keep an eye out there. Uh, and then I got second place. I also have a pretty nice narrative with Viper in this year as well. Uh, and then Tato uh, got to the semifinals. Again, I beat him in the semifinals to get to the finals. So we have one point for Yo, one point for Tato, uh, five and three. Uh, the reason MBL, Dega, and Valise come up is that they're the only three players other than uh, these five to get... Um, uh, semi-final results or or higher in uh in these five tournaments hopefully i didn't leave anyone out but let's go for it so mbl didn't participate in nec3 he was busy with school and whatnot so or the university um and so he couldn't participate so i put na here uh dogao uh, hair is always prepared na as well <laughs> he did not participate and valise participated but unfortunately didn't make it to the semi-finals so he's gonna get a zero points so right now we have Viper win the first place here. First term of 2020 was NEC3. Next up we have HC3, Hidden Cup 3. Viper with another first place. Very, very nice. Leary, unfortunately, once again, didn't make the, the top four. So he's going to be striking out with, with zero. He lost to Tato in a very close series. Uh, and then Mr. Yo lost to Viper. Once again, losing to Viper in an earlier round, not the finals. And he's striking out with zero this time. I once again lose to Viper. Let's not talk about the score. It was 4-0, but again, let's not talk about it too much. But again, I get second place, so that's not too bad. Again, my story with Viper this year has been pretty sad till now, not gonna lie. 5-3, doesn't get better, spoiler alert. Uh, but anyway, we have the uh, Tato getting another, I think, third and fourth place here. I'm not sure who, yeah, sorry, he, he lost to me in the semi. So again, me and Tato uh, have had a, a history there, positive uh, for me though, at least, and uh, that's not too bad. So he nets himself another point, so. Uh, and then, oh, actually, the dark horse here, Dogao gets himself a semifinal placement as well. Uh, he beat MBL in the quarters, and he's uh, a semifinal finish. He lost to Viper as well, so great point for him. So Dogao gets a point here. Uh, Viper is going to get five total from that, and I'm going to get three. Tata with the one, and Dogao with the one. Let's keep, you know, move swift, swiftly along here. We have uh, Red Bull W, or Red Bull Willow 1. Not, so, not sure why I said W. Uh, Viper actually gets second place, so hold the phone. Viper is not going to win every tournament of 2020. Mr. Yo steps up and gets the first place. So now, again, this narrative, pretty cool, eh? Mr. Yo lost the first two in early rounds, but then comes up strong, gets himself the big win here, and he sweeps Viper uh, in the finals. I guess Viper passed on the broom from Hidden Cup, gave it to Mr. Yo, and he used it on, uh, on Viper. I'm not sure what happened there too much, but big result for Mr. Yo. Me and Leary strike out in the semifinals, but we need ourselves one point each for this scoring system. Next up, we have Red Bull W, Red Bull Wololo 2. Yikes. <laughs> and uh, another winner. Again, the narrative is getting more interesting now. Leary, who had a really rough start of the year, is now making a huge comeback near the end. Gets himself a first place uh, vic finish, and he actually takes out the Viper in the semifinals. Really good stuff from Leary for this tournament. Gets the five points. I actually make it to the second place finish once again, Hera. <laughs> Number two is looking good for you, my man. Um, but I managed to beat Yo in the semifinals, get to the finals, and unfortunately lost versus Leary. But fortunately for him, very happy for him, of course, gets the five points. So again, it's me, uh, so me, Mr. Yo, Leary, and, uh, and Viper who get top four in both these events. So we get both these events to get top four and just in different order. And so, that, you know, points distributed as follows and uh, or as shown and then KOTD3 is happening now uh, we have me and the Viper who struck out completely here we finished both top eights 
Uh, I lost to Leary, Viper lost to Mr. Yo. So again, it's the kind of the top four kind of beating each other here left and right, it seems, uh, that, that we've seen so far here. Uh, but we've had a couple other people crawl up here. We had uh, Valise I want to talk about first. He got to the semifinals, lost to MBL. Uh, pretty, you know, pretty rough scoreline there. I didn't catch the game, so I'm not going to speak of it. But um, he definitely, uh, you know, had a really good run getting to semifinals. Props to Valise, very happy for him as well. And we all saw him, you know, be very happy getting that win over Dalt. And uh, so disappointing semifinals for him. But hey, I think he should be really happy with that result. Gets himself a point. MBL had a really rough year and was even MIA for the first tournament. However, he's coming back strong. And he's coming back with either a first place or a second place. It's not decided. And I don't want to give any predictions. Just said either he gets first place or third place. And that will be his scoring for this tournament. Uh, same thing with Leary, who made it to the finals and is playing NBL tomorrow when I launch this video. Uh, so best of luck to both of those. May the best man win. And then he's going to have five or three, depending on if he wins that final. Mr. Yo, though, gets the semifinal finish, losing to Leary as well in the semifinals. So, um, you know, great tournament here for KO3D3. And now brings us to the total. After all five S tier tournaments have been concluded um, for, uh, you know, for 2020, we have the remaining stats. Viper is sitting at 14 points. He is the best 2020 or the best AV2 player in 2020, statistically speaking, using my system, which is pretty, you know, pretty standard. He's the best player, hands down. He has the best tournament results in 2020. And his worst result was a top eight performance, losing out to Mr. Yo in KOTD3. But still sitting at 14 points, uh, kind of not miles away from the competition, but a good couple steps away. Next, we have Leary to talk about. Either he gets 11 points if he wins tomorrow in the KOTD finals, or he'll have nine points total. Uh, either way, I think he should be really happy with the second half of 2020. Nets himself a really solid finish here in this scoring system. Then we have Mr. Yo finishing off at eight, and this is confirmed. Lost in the semifinals of KOTD three, but eight points is pretty solid, and he even has a first place finish, which is always very nice for him. On my end of things, I got three second place finishes so i didn't see the light at first but i still had some pretty reasonable results across the tournament or across the tournaments my worst result was the ko3 similar to viper losing out in the um, in the quarterfinals but hey i end i end the year with uh you know 10 points and i think i had some pretty reasonable results and uh, you know i can speak because since it's me for myself i'm pretty proud of the results overall and um you know and I, I think it's a it's a pretty solid finish of the year for me uh, we had Tato start off the year pretty strong with two semifinals, but then kind of uh, fell off as the other tournaments passed him by. Again, it's not to say he did terribly in Red Bull of one and two, but he just you know didn't make it to the semifinals where I'm taking the score. Uh, so he finishes the year with two points. So again, he started strong. He even won Clown Cup, so which is you know an eighth year tournament. So he's doing well. He's 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 had a good year overall, uh, but he just didn't perform as well in the second half for SD tournaments. Uh, MBL had a complete opposite um, story than Tato, and his narrative is as follows. He had a really rough start of the year um, due to you know, being busy with IRL stuff, not getting enough practice on DE, but he slowly ramped up the practice and had some disappointing results in the Red Bull tournaments, but picked it up in KO3D, netting himself either a first place or a second place finish, yet to find out. But he's going to end the year with either five points or three points. The guy on Valise had, you know, some pretty nice uh, solo results here or unique results here, uh, which is great for them as players. You know, very, very nice. But again, it's not very consistent across the board here. So which brings us to our main point. Who is the top four? Who is the top five? Statistically speaking, in 2020, guys, the top five is as follows. Viper is number one. Leary is number two. Terra is number three, unless Leary loses uh, tomorrow in KO3D3. But again... It's very, very close. It would be 11 or 9 versus 10. Mr. Yo would be fourth, and then uh, MBL would be fifth, no matter what happens in the final. So those are my top five as according to term results uh, for 2020. And honestly, if you take a look at uh, just one, one other resource here, if you take a look at this trend here, the top five, again, Tato's here uh, currently, but MBL is creeping up. You see the plus 67 in the past few days, past few weeks, rather, he's creeping up. And again, I know this website isn't 100% accurate, um, but again, uh, the, 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 the top the top guys that I took from the 2020 tournaments are showing up here. So there's a lot of correlation with it as well. Uh, I want to point to something, though. I know a lot of people um, are saying, you know, uh, Viper not getting the results they were expecting him to in the past few tournaments. Guys, look at look at the results. He's still not getting the best results of 2020. And he's still with 87% of all tournament series win rate in tournaments. And this is beyond what I have, what I have 63%, Leary 
Mr. Yo 65, MBL 53, Tato 61, the very percent at 87%. So all of this to say is let's look at the numbers, guys. Let's look at the stats and let's see who the top five guys are at the end of the year and Viper sits number one still. So that's my opinion on the current top player scene. I hope you guys found it interesting. I tried to be as unbiased as possible. If you, if you guys think I suck in, in my reasoning or if I did any mistakes, please let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear your opinion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Once again, be sure to check out my uh, link below in, in the description and take a look at the tournament I'm hosting November 14th to 15th. It's gonna be featuring the top four players of the year, which is gonna be the Viper sitting at one, Liri, myself, uh, Hera, and then Mr. Yo. So four top players will be featured in a massive weekend sponsored by Tempo, shout out to them. Um, and until next time, catch you guys later, see ya.